Hey, it's Ben from the Artful Family and I'm back for kind of an update from my printer. It's been about six or seven months and I just thought, hey, you know what, let's uh, see what's going on and uh, give you some thoughts as to maybe now that you're into printing, what are some things you could do now uh, once you're a little more comfortable. As you can see, I've uh, experimented a little bit uh, with some filament change mid-print. Uh, this is kind of my most detailed print I've done yet, the T-Rex, working on a catapult in the back. It's been loads of fun. Most of the other stuff I give to my kids or friends or, or whatnot. So it's kind of tough to show you what, uh, what other stuff I've made. So I'm going to go through a list and we're going to talk about um, the things that you now should think about once you have a bit more experience and you're into 3D printing. Okay, let's go and see what are some more things you need to think about now that you're more comfortable with printing. Number one, firmware. The firmware that comes with the Ender 3 is an old version of Marlin and it does not have thermal runaway protection. Now I'll put a link in the video as to uh, explanation about that and, and also how to do it. I did it with uh, Teaching Tech. He has a great video on how to update uh, the the firmware there. So I bought myself an Arduino because I've always kind of been curious about it. Unfortunately, I haven't dived deeper with the Arduino yet. So, but follow his instructions to the letter because I did not and I had to redo it a few times. But I ended up getting it going and uh, think about if you know any other, other people that have an Ender 3. Maybe as a team, you guys can do all the printers that you uh, of people that you know versus just doing it for yourself. It's just safer for everyone and uh, promotes uh, uh, great printing. All right, number two, we're gonna focus on safety right now. And number two is the XT60 connector in the back of your printer. So because I've, uh, I've got a big mess here, I'm not gonna really show you, but in the back, um, um, there's a connector that goes from the power supply to your um, board here and it's a yellow connector it's the XT60 now mine start burning up uh, getting a little uh, black or whatnot so luckily I caught caught it in time because I'm into RC cars I've got some other uh, Dean connectors that are rated for the same kind of draw and wattage so it was easy for me to uh, fix that up but I highly recommend um, keeping an eye on your rear connector. The one that we're using for the elementary school uh, has not burnt up. I keep an eye on it and it's working great. Number three, print list. Well, when I first came up and uh, talked to you guys in the first video, I gave you kind of the must prints just to get you rolling. Well, things have rolled and uh, I've printed more and definitely uh, here's kind of an update as to things that I would recommend you to do. So we have the original uh, filament guide here, uh, which I don't have on here right now because I'm troubleshooting our elementary school printer at the moment. That's really useful, but someone pointed out that it does kind of get in the way if you do higher prints with the kind of the angle. So keep that in mind. Um, I have two more filament guides. Um, I have one that I can remove right here. Really cool. Uh, someone uh, put a suggestion in the comments and it's a uh, skateboard bearing and uh, it just fits on super well and you just put your filament through and it just keeps it flowing because uh, I do see that sometimes uh, the filament can cut the plastic on the edge uh, here at your extruder motor there and then also I do have another little filament guide right by the shaft just so that uh, the filament doesn't touch the shaft there uh, super small and basic but uh, works really great so all in all three filament guides is what I use uh, you you figure out how you like it yourself. Uh, I do have a Raspberry Pi, so the Raspberry Pi case, um, you know, I'll talk to you about that later, but highly recommended. So Raspberry Pi case there. Then um, because I have a webcam with extra long um, cord here, uh, I have kind of, um, how do you say, Frankenstein, this webcam mount. The webcam mount is just kind of like the uh, filming guide, just fits perfect. Uh, just the webcam mount. I haven't found anything that I really like. Uh, the belt, the tensioner, uh, I use, I kind of use it, but I don't. I have the other part that I haven't done yet as well to go on the Y axis. But again, uh, that's just more, I haven't really, it's, t it's t it, you know, the, the tension's tight. So uh, I, I don't really worry about it as much as I thought I would have. The Hero Me uh, mount for your hot end, uh, I did that. 
I, it's tough for me to compare with the stock mount, but the Hero Me uh, has worked great for me. I, um, as you can see, the, these are all printed with the Hero Me mount. Uh, so I have two 5015 fans. Number four, kind of an interesting one here, is things I didn't use. So I bought stuff that I didn't use. So things I didn't use are in this little Tupperware here. Uh, didn't use these uh, PL smoothers. Got a pack of those. You know what? I'm printing good. I don't really see a need for the PL smoothers uh, from my experience. Although, like I said, I, have, I haven't changed my speeds. I still print pretty slow, but um, you know, these are pretty smooth prints that I'm doing. So I didn't feel I needed it. Um, I got um, a BL Touch. I ended up trying, uh, thinking I was gonna try that. And um, just the amount of work it would take for me to install it and uh, the success I'm getting, I kind of decided not to. So there you go. I wouldn't say you need to rush out to get those things um, and do mods uh, all that much. Uh, it works. Okay, number five, Octoprint. Here you go. I gotta say, uh, Octoprint, psh, Mind blown. Uh, for me, I love it. I I can't say enough about it. Uh, get yourself a, a newer uh, Raspberry Pi, so you just have the most amount of power for for the uh, service. And then um, yeah, go for it. Don't question it. Don't even you know. Don't have a second thought about it. Uh, Octoprint. I actually uh, I rarely donate, and I had to donate uh, this woman uh, some money. Uh, because she has revolutionized uh, 3D printing to me. So uh, it makes it easy. You can control, so you can have your printer elsewhere and control it from your laptop or your desktop or from your phone. You can look at it. The webcam feature has kept me feeling secure that my print is going good. I don't wanna waste filament. So I check in on my print. It's kind of exciting. I'm at work, you know, something to, to, to you know, look forward to or going home. But at least if it's failing, I could just stop it. And then, hey, I'm not losing filament. So Octoprint, uh, essentially I experimented with all these other things that people were re re recommending. Don't bother. Well, bother if you want, but uh, Octoprint really uh, functions for me uh to print at home or keep an eye on it while i'm away so uh yeah that's what i would say about octoprint give it a shot don't uh, sweat the cost of a raspberry pi number six springs wonk, wonk. so i um i updated the springs on the uh on the printer under the bed there and uh can't really see it there but i used uh they're kind of yellow springs uh stiffer uh, I just, you know, I don't know. I, I find that I wanted it to be a little stiffer, uh, from, in my opinion, anyway, I just felt like it would be nicer if, uh, if there was less, less play and, uh, just makes it easier for leveling. That's, that's kind of my opinion. Again, you know, I'm six, seven months in. So, uh, a lot of, and this is my only printer, although I'm troubleshooting, um, uh, a different printer as well. An Ender 3, but uh, the elementary schools, uh, my experience is limited to that. Uh, it works for me. Um, I kind of change the springs on the whim just to see how it would work. It's working. So that's, uh, that's what I've done. So it does work for me. Number, oh, what number? Number seven, naming axis. Your axis, axes, axes. Anyway, naming them. Not a bad idea. So I, I put a little tag Z, X, Y. Works for me. And um, yeah, it's not bad. Uh, it turned out good. So I would say do that. Pretty straightforward, pretty easy, pretty quick. Number eight, experiment. You know what? Uh, I'm at that point where I'm a little bit more comfortable and I've been playing around. Right now I have, uh, what, two, four, six, seven different kind of filaments at the moment. So uh, basically I'm starting to experiment. Uh, I kind of like the prints that are all one color, but uh, it'd be kind of cool to, you know, experiment with some different stuff, I guess, if you want to put it that way. So one thing that I've done is I uh, was making these coins. This is part of the Caribbean coins. Uh, I ended up painting it, taking a syringe uh, or taking some acrylic uh, paint, diluting it uh, severely, take a syringe and kind of suck up the paint and then kind of 
place it in the uh, cavities there. Turned out okay. I actually really like the characteristic of it. Uh, also, this is the Bitcoin that I made, uh, same method. Uh, turned out, looked pretty good. Uh, I printed a bunch of others afterwards, but this kind of caused my adventure of changing filament mid-print. Turned out great. So this is my first time changing filament mid-print. Um, I think it was cool. Uh, it's very crisp compared to the other times that I did it, or with a painting. But it doesn't have that character. So, you know, pros and cons. But uh, changing filament is a lot easier than I thought. Ultimately, what I do is I go to my Octoprint. Uh, I press pause. Uh, although, okay, wait, uh, so I'm printing. I have my other filament ready, straightened. Uh, go to Octoprint, pause, come out, pull out the old print, uh, filament, push it all the way through. And just as it touches, I let go. And then I go back and I press play and uh, continues printing. So uh, that's the way I've done it. It works great. Uh, I've done it three times. So I'm no pro, but uh, it, it's worked great every time. Um, so if you push in too much, like when I say, um, just so, when it touches, if you push too much, because a hot end is hot, it's going to create kind of a little, uh, splot, splot or whatever you want to call it. So, um, doesn't look bad at all really. And depends where you are in the print. If you're in kind of in a cavity, then I would worry less. So definitely experiment, play, have fun, um, and see how it goes. Number nine. Tools I like. Okay, so check this out. Uh, you get your set of tools that you use, and you know what? They're all great tools. So I'm not, uh, yeah. What I'm suggesting is other tools to like, uh, to use. Now, this little thing here, we have this uh, thing in our town once a year where some guy comes in, well, the street market for the whole kind of three, four blocks. And this one guy sells these um, kind of medical tools and other stuff. For super cheap and I, I i bought some every time and never regret it especially this these little tweezers it's kind of nice when you're looking at stuff you can kind of go in and grab or whatnot so it's kind of cool for for uh the oddball stuff the tool that i adore is this the uh the kind of dentist uh tooth picking tool uh super great this uh, has a little notch there which is ideal especially when you're in prints and you're trying to get stuff out you can kind of like scratch it off and stuff so cleaning prints this is ideal but also when i'm mid print sometimes i have um, a skirt i like to kind of take it off mid while it's printing so i just see the stuff anyway that's kind of me so i can kind of pick up stuff during the print and especially with this here um you know i used a wood filament for the t-rex and there's just a lot of little i, I find that the wood filament uh, create a lot of bubbles or i wouldn't say bubbles but little how do you call it, little blobs or something that comes out. So I was able to just kind of pick them off. It's a great filament. I, I love the wood uh, a lot. Uh, it looks cool, but I definitely, you can see kind of a color change uh, slightly here. And um, it, it kind of blobs up more than uh, kind of other PLAs that I've used. So number 10 is troubleshooting. Now, right now I have our elementary school uh, printer. Uh, to help them to kind of troubleshoot the issues they've been having. And really, one thing about 3D printing is about being patient. Uh, for me, it's been a uh, tough road because, oh, that's why I created the first video. So let's let's continue on from there. So troubleshooting is, uh, is a key aspect of uh, 3D printing. So uh, for me, printing slow, you can always see stuff a lot. Or for me, I saw stuff that I didn't see when I was printing fast. And that's why I say play with your printer and get to know it, um, especially when you're new, because there you can kind of <clears throat> learn how things are supposed to feel. I found that um, the filament going through the PTFE tubing was had a lot more, it took more pressure compared to my printer. So uh, just from my experience, I was able to kind of feel that out. I found that there were some, uh, some kind of maybe kinks in them or something, but that was kind of a problem in their printing. But one problem I'm kind of still in the middle of figuring out, which was frustrating, is uh, we've got nozzles that are marked as 0.4, but they don't flow as well as other nozzles that are marked 0.4. This spiky thingy, as you can see, I've used it quite a lot. It's a great resource, actually. Um, for troubleshooting the nozzle, I try to clean it out as best as possible. And one thing I found is, uh, so this is a 0.4 uh, that I got, 
and I can get this, or actually it's full of goo, but I can get it right through and kind of just, yeah, get the pin right through. This 0.4, uh, brand new, never used before, I can't get it through. Like what's, what's up with that? So 0 0.4, 0 0.4, this one doesn't go, uh, I can't push it right through because it's smaller. So yeah, be mindful of that. So if, if it's not extruding right and, um, cause I notice on the brass, uh, cog there for that, uh, the extruder motor, um, it just had a bunch of filament because it was just trying to push th thinking that it's a 0.4 millimeter, uh, nozzle, but it doesn't appear to be. So that's kind of frustrating. PTFE couplers, um, never a bad investment. Uh, I found that, uh, if the, the ones that come with the printer kind of go back and forth when the uh, filament goes back and forth, you know, and uh, basically I, I can't say if it's causing issues or not. I like things to be tight. So um, I upgraded um, their printer and my printer with um, newer PTF couplers here. So definitely investing in those is never a bad thing in uh, my opinion. One thing that I've been doing and I still don't regret it is when you put it in, get yourself like a thin little black pen, just like, Get yourself a thin little black pen like this. Just mark it. Just mark it like that. And now you know that where the location was. So when you're printing or you're having problems, you could just eyeball it and be like, oh, it's where I left it. Perfect. Well, look, it's pushed out like quarter of an inch from the last time I marked it. Then that gives you a hint of what, something that might not be functioning as you would want it to be. So be mindful of these sort of things. Use pens, mark stuff and um, just make it so uh, it's easier for you to, uh, to figure out where the problem is. And number 11, to finish it all off, comments. So basically uh, from the last video I made, there was definitely some comments, uh, positive and constructive. So uh, I wanna say thank you to everybody just uh, for putting their time and just watching my videos. Uh, or my video, I should say, um, it's definitely, I got a lot more viewership than I suspected or ex expected anyway. So uh, some things is, yes, I move these things too fast. Yes, I got it. Okay. Uh, tons of people put notes as to, oh man, you move your tray too fast. You're going to back feed and you're going to blow things up. Okay, fine. I didn't know. Okay. Didn't know. Now I know. So uh, there you go. So thank you for that. Uh, so don't move your tray back and forth super fast because uh, it back feeds and can cause problems. Luckily, um, I'm one of those that didn't have to have any problems from that. Um, now, a lot of people also commented in regards to uh, me or using a vacuum seal for your filament versus uh, a dry box for my previous video. That's cool. You could do that. Um, I just found the big challenge there is I change filament. I change filament, you know, obviously, as you can see, within the same print. Uh, I could do two prints in a day, different filaments. Uh, I could do two different filaments in two days, right? So uh, ultimately, if I'm, if I'm in a printing mood, Vacuum sealing every filament every time is just doesn't work. And a box with tons of desiccant works great. I've used desiccant for my, um, uh, where I store my rifles. I, uh, with work, I had like a big bag of these super small bags. And I tell you, I, I opened that up and I could feel how dry it is. So desiccant in a sealed box, like, you know, with little clips on it. It, you know, it brings cons consistency. And I think with 3D printing, if you can be consistent, uh, you'll do yourself some good. So anyway, thanks for the uh, for the suggestions, all that sort of stuff. And for a treat, because everybody's been super great, watch the videos, appreciate the comments. I'm going to do something here. I am going to take this little um, uh, thing off. I've had the screen protector on since I bought it six months ago. It's kind of my own little thing. I don't like to take the little screen connectors off right away. Same with my laptop and computer. I take them off later on and I think this is about this time. So anyway, guys, uh, Ben from the Airful family, I just want to say thank you. Uh, I really appreciate uh, all the comments and uh, the views. Uh, bring it on. And uh, this video, I kind of made it for you guys uh, just because it's been a lot of activity. And uh, yeah, game on. So if you guys want anything else or got any suggestions, uh, lay it on. So have a great day. And uh, I'll see you at the next video, but not until, oh, oh, <laughs> see, this is just such a great tool, right? Yeah. All right, all right, all right. I'll take it off. Oh, yeah. There you go. Okay, guys, have a great time. Thank you very much. See you at the next video.